Yeah, definitely got to do something about my hair. Oh, good morning. Uh, right, I'm on the second part of the Bolson Slider vlog. Um, overnight, I've let them dry. Uh, it's created a hard surface, the paint, when it's dried. Um, uh, what I've done, I've actually topped it, uh, finished off with a black felt marker pen just on the top, giving it a nice uh, finish to it, a nice collar, a nice edge to it. Okay, All right. Now, the next stage, I'm going to whip some eyes on it, uh, on the float itself. So, I've got my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, okay, well, right, there is a little method that we use to whip the eyes on. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put uh, a straightforward eye, I uh, don't even see that, um, on the, I'm going to whip that onto the bottom of the stem. Uh, once I've whipped it on, I should be bending it upwards so it's standing out at 90 degrees from the stem. Now, how do we whip the eye on? Quite simple. What we do, first of all, we cut into the cape, we create a small split. Careful I don't cut my fingers. All right, only a small split. And what we do now, we get our cotton. I'm going to use black uh, to match the colour of the float. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just quickly click this through over. Using the blade to open up the split. And I'm going to push, pull this through now, this cotton, to the end. Now the cotton we use is a very strong fabric cotton. Um, you, can, you can't use ordinary cotton, it's got to be a bit stronger. I mean, you can use ordinary cotton, but I find much better to use a, an industrial type of cotton. Okay, so what I've done, I brought that straight through there, close to the split. Now, next stage, I whip the eye onto the step. Now, I'm going to make sure that I've got enough... Uh, of the eye coming away from the stem so I can bend it to 90 degrees. Okay, now um, I'm going to do now, I'm going to start whipping. Simple enough, you start off with a couple of turns and then once you've got it going, you twist the float and the cotton wraps itself around the stem, which is whipping the prongs of the eye. To the to the stem. So I just keep doing this. Uh, it doesn't matter if you overlay it. I mean, you could make it neat if you want to, but uh, I find by overlaying it, it gives it a stronger whip. Okay. Now, when I finish whipping the cotton just above the prongs of the eye. I'll now introduce a small piece of cotton and I've, uh, I've got a lighter colour here just to show you. Now I'm going to continue whipping the, f the stem but I'm going to introduce this little loop of cotton just on the inside of the, the whip. And as I carry on now, that's just hold it in place, and I'm as I whip it, I'm actually whipping it slightly uh, looser than I would when I'm whipping the the prongs because I want to pull this cotton back through um, through the whipping. So once I think I've got adequate amount of whipping, that's about it there. I don't know. I'll, I'll finish the. Uh, I'll cut the this little Stanley blade. The cut the cotton there. Now what I'll do, I'll introduce the tail end of the cotton back through the loop. If you can you see this. And now I'll pull the white bit of cotton back through, draw in the tail. There you are. <laughs> that was quite quick. I should probably do that in slow motion. What I do now is just neat, tidy up the whipping, by the loose whipping, by pushing it down and pulling on the tail end. Yeah, and there we are. That's 
all finished. Okay, you know what I'll do? Just cut that bit off there. And there's your finished eye. Now, using style pinchers, I grab the actual eye itself and I bend this up now to a 90 degrees. Okay, and that's a stand, a standout eye now. Okay, so by bending the eye at the 90 degrees, that starts to stand out from the stem of the float. Uh, the next stage I'll be introducing uh, is the top eye, which I'll be putting just a, uh, on the shoulder of the float. And what I'll do, I'll eye it up and I'll put a little marker there. If I can, yeah, so, yeah, so there you are, that's where the, that's where the small top eye is going to go. Okay. Okay, here's the top eye. You can see it, small bit die. Um, but before I introduce it to the float, I'm actually going to make the, the, the eye slightly smaller by pinching it together because I don't want the eye too wide because obviously we need to put a, a knot on the line to stop it slipping so if you look at that I'm just going to start bending that in slowly uh, uh, not too much uh, that's about yeah that's about it now to, if you can actually see that the eyes are a lot smaller now okay just enough of the line to run through and obviously by putting a knot on the line, then uh, the knot will stop the float from sliding up the line any further. That's, a, that's of course once we've determined the depth of the float. Now what I'm also going to do, uh, I'm actually going to bend this now at a 90 degrees. Okay, so I've got a, a, another standout eye. If I see that there. Okay. Introduce a little bit of super glue on the top now. Oh, bit of shakes this morning. Yeah. Okay, bit of super glue. Now I'll be eyeing this up. And I've got my spot which I've marked there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push this into the float nice and deep. Okay, just checking that it's in line. Uh, just slightly out, just push that round up. Just a little bit. All right, then that's going to sell. Lovely. What I'll do, just as a precaution, uh, an extra strength, I'll just put a little drop of super glue on just on the outside and let that dry for a second. There you go. So there you go. You've got the two eyes on the float in line with each other. And that's, that's almost there. Uh, the float almost finished in a minute. All I need to do now uh, is to shot it up, uh, put some markings on the side, the shotting capacity, and then varnish it and let that uh, dry overnight. And that'll be your finished float. Okay. Here's a little tip. I've got a little magnet there that holds all the eyes onto the magnet so that uh, if I drop one, all I've got to do is put the magnet uh, next to the eye and uh, it'll attach itself uh, almost like magic <laughs> no we're joking um, but uh, yeah well just uh, so what I do I'll pull another one off now ready to do the other float there you go Yeah, it's uh, it's winter time at the moment. Um, as I'm making these vlogs, uh, it's been a bit cold outside. the The rivers are all up and flooded, so can't do any river fishing. There was a match on the local commercial lake, but I didn't fancy that, so I've ended up making uh, some floats today. 
and a vlog. Yeah. I uh, I like to sing you a song when I'm doing this. Twas by the crystal brooklet I wandered on my way. Among the gentle ripplets I spied a trout at play. Was here and there he darted with quick, quick, quick delight. Was never fish so lively and frolicum, says he. Was never fish so lively and frolicum, says he. Twas then came the wicked angler with cruel delight. He spied the fish from water and spied that fish from sight. Oh. I've forgotten the rest of the words, but I never forget that song. It was taught to us in school many, many years ago. And you think I'm cracking up? It's okay, I, I haven't touched a drop today. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have a bit of fun in life, haven't you, be fair? I mean, there's a lot of boring people out there. I know there's a lot on the match circuits lately, I don't know why. I mean, fishing is supposed to be fun. I mean, when it starts not to be fun, it has to turn the pack up, I think. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right, I'm just finishing off the second float. See if I can make a slightly better drop than the last one. But uh, making these floats is time consuming. Uh, you've got the satisfaction, of course, knowing that you've got a homemade float, and there's no greater experience. Uh, and satisfaction is uh, in making your own float and, and then eventually catching fish on it. Um, as I say, if I had to do this for a living, uh, I don't think I'd, I'd, <laughs> I'd make much money. I wouldn't be very rich at all because uh, it takes so long to make floats. But hey, I enjoy doing it and I don't mind doing it for the, uh, the anglers out there. Because most of these floats you can't, um, you can't buy from the shops for some reason these days. Uh, you have to sort of make, uh, get somebody to make them or make them yourself. So hopefully, you know, this vlog, this video will give you an insight and perhaps encourage you to make some of your own floats. There you are. Again, let's bend this to a 90 degrees. Yeah, okay. So as you can imagine, the line's going to run through that. Uh, again. I'll just mark it so I know exactly where to put the top eye. Uh, yeah. Yep, that's it. Um, this is the reason I'm making these vlogs, obviously, to uh, encourage people to make their own floats. Um, but also, uh, I suppose at the end of the day, it could be a little bit of a commercial venture for myself, you know. And I've retired. Um, I'm hoping to maybe sell a few floats online. People are interested in me making them a few floats. Uh, but also I'll be selling the raw material so you can make your own as well. Um, so look for that shortly coming up on my website. Um, let's just put this into that nice and deep. Just iron that, iron that up a second. Right, just slightly... As I say, it is time consuming making floats, but uh, as I say, you've got the satisfaction knowing that the float will work once once you've got it, uh, when you're fishing with it. There we are. Okay. Okay, I'll let that dry for a second. Now, as I said, I already know that these are roughly going to carry about four swan shot. So, what I'm going to do, uh, while I'm in this process, uh, waiting for that super glue to dry, which will dry pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to also mark the float with the shotting capacity. And what I use, I use one of these white marker pens, it's like a pilot pen, uh, and it's give it a shake. It's almost uh, 
I suppose like water uh, water paint um, but it does dry and of course you need to vanish it over it afterwards so what I'm going to do I'm going to mark this now as force one okay there we are. and the reason being of course yeah, you know, once you've got a, um, a few floats in the in the tackle box, you want to be to look quickly uh, to find out which uh, float you want. Uh, so whether it's four, five, six, seven, or eight, um, swan shot. Okay, and I'll do the same with the other one. Right. Let it dry, of course. Okay, so I've got my varnish. I'm going to give it. First of all, I'm going to dab the. The pr printed capacity weight uh, on the side. Okay, let that dry a, a little second. So that gives that little bit of extra protection. Yeah. Now I'm going to finish the float off now uh, by putting this varnish quite liberally because as it dries, it'll actually dry. Um, evenly uh, on the float so it doesn't matter whether you got whether it goes on thick or not but it will actually create a nice finish to the float there you are and, uh, and hold that bit because uh, that's not what I'm going to do do the whole float Yeah, that's uh, almost finished. Um, as I say, I use my flower arranging uh, pad. Pop that in there, and there you go. And I'll let that dry over, over the next four to six hours. Uh, I'll look at it, and then possibly uh, might put a second coat, depending on uh, on. Uh, on how it's actually dried because sometimes although you know uh, you can't see it um, there's bits of the float sometimes you miss now I know a lot of uh, float uh, makers actually dip their floats uh, and I tried all that and I find that you know you don't need to do that because it's a bit excessive the amount of varnish or paint that you use so by hand brushing it you know I think uh, I think it's as good as anything else there you go. So let me just uh, do the stem now. Right. Now I, I expect the next question people are going to ask is uh, how do you actually shop these floats up? Okay. Well, Besides shotting it, uh, the float up, you also need to adjust and set the float in your swim. Okay, uh, right, I put them to one side now. I've tidied uh, my little workspace up. Uh, I've cleaned the floats, um, put the turps on it, a bit of water, and then uh, stored it in water itself. Uh, I, you're either going to hate my blogs are you going to love them so I'll leave that up to you um, don't forget thumbs up or thumbs down doesn't matter not that I care <laughs> be nice if you give me a thumbs up right now what I'm going to say uh, I'm going to show you now is the actual um, shotting pattern now if you can see that uh, the shotting pattern is usually done with a bulk and then you have your two droppers you set your float up the line obviously whatever depth you think it is and as I mentioned about plumbing um, you plumb the depth and you adjust your float accordingly now that's how you shot the float um, I'm also going to now show you how to whip or how to put a sliding knot on the line okay um, right I've got a bit of line there just to show you um, 
and we're going to uh, now this is our rear line and now we're going to put a sliding knot on this line and basically you need another piece of line which you cut usually uh, a slightly larger diameter than the rear line itself um, and what you do you thought you create a loop first of all okay now you all almost is is it's as though you whip in uh, the line against the other piece of line if you can see what I'm doing here and what I'm doing I'll do that you know half a dozen times or so and then making sure that the one length of line is parallel with the, the rear line then you created your loop and what you now do is put this back through that loop push it tight wet it slightly there you go and there you've got your sliding knot you know what I like to do is to tighten that up slightly and just cut it off about an inch or half inch either side I'll do that now Okay, so there's your sliding knot, and that will slide up and down the, the line. I don't know if you can let me see that, just to show you again. Yeah, see? Now, it's always a good idea to actually put two of these knots on the line in case, because uh, one can slip, but if you put two, it basically will uh, stabilize the knots on the line without slipping each time you cast or strike. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, if you've missed that, uh, the the marvelous thing about the internet and videos is that you can rewind it and play it again and again until you see how it's done properly. Um, as I said, I've learned uh, these methods over the years. Uh, um, there there are other ways of using um, a stopper for sliders. You can actually use the little rubber stops these days. Uh, well, you, I don't know if you see that, but you, you pl place them on the line and uh, they're small enough to go through the rings of the rods. But um, uh, personally, I prefer to use the knots because uh, not only are they smaller, but you can adjust them, run them up and down the line much easier. And, um, you know, and they, they, these do tend to sometimes bulk. Uh, um, jam in the rings of the eyes of the rod sometimes but hey sometimes uh, they work so there you are, that's another method uh, oh I'll just quickly show you my uh, shot in tube which is um, a large jar like a sweet jar you can buy them from a lot of shops uh, I remember when I was in France uh, back who, in 19 frozen to death many years ago when I was um, sponsored by a company called Water Queen and Water Queen um, were years ahead of their time as far as the British market was concerned with fishing lines because I, I actually brought their lines over to the country tried to introduce them into the marketplace and the angler at the time just, just weren't ready for them I mean they were low diameter lines um, more supple and um, well in fact they, they were 10 years ahead of us and I remember going around the shops uh, because I was a rep in them days working with Bayer line <laughs> um, and I was showing people this uh, the new line tech, uh, technology and they was oh no that's not good it's a fad <laughs> little did they realize today we all use high-tech lines. Anyway, um, I like to think that perhaps I was one of the first to introduce that into the country as well. Uh, but hey, that's, uh, those are times gone past. Which reminds me, you know, this day and age, um, there's less and less youngsters coming into the sport. I mean, most of the anglers I go to fish with uh, my age or, you know, around about my age, slightly younger in cases, slightly older. Um, I remember going to a match last year in Evesham uh, on the Avon and um, I think there was a sellout, almost uh, 80 anglers turned up. Uh, you had to be over 60, to, I think, to fish the match. The following week they had a junior uh, competition and I think about 11 turned up. You know, it just goes to show you the, uh, uh, the there's a big gap in, in the generations, of course, with uh, computers and so forth. This day, you know, it's hard to get anglers uh, out 
in the uh, in the fresh air. Uh, and I suspect you, the viewers, are uh, probably like me, who were brought up in the in the fresh air rather than stuck home on the computers. Anyway, um, yeah. So going back to the Water Queen, uh, they, uh, they first introduced me to these uh, ch uh, tubes. Well, they were long tubes. They were like. Whew, about three foot off the ground and that's what they used to use um when they used to shot their floats up at home and you know the funny thing is uh we as uh, uk anglers we do tend to shot them up we use them uh, and then once we finish fishing we'll put them back on the winders and take them home now the french anglers at that time so much different they would they would shot their floats up obviously in the tubes put them on their winders they would fish with them and after the match they would destroy them yeah, they spent hours and hours on their tackle through the week uh, for their three-hour fishing matches, which they used to have, and, um, and just totally destroyed the rigs afterwards. But hey, um, I suppose us the British angler, we like to think we're different. We think we're uh, we can. Um, well, it's proved over the years, haven't it? I mean, uh, the World Championships now. Uh, England are always one of the favourites, um, and in my day, when the Welsh uh, team first. Uh, introduced themselves into the uh, the world circuit we were fishing rods and lines and we used to compete and we've done quite well so um yeah things change and um things got to carry on anyway um hope you enjoyed this vlog uh i'll be doing some more now uh, i've got some more floats to make and again i'll show you some methods and uh have a little banter and uh, i've got to apologize about my singing um but, you know, sometimes it comes in my head and I just have to sing. <laughs> anyway, all the best to you again soon.